Concussion awareness has come a long way over the years in numerous athletic fields, especially in professional wrestling. In addition to benching wrestlers until they can definitively pass concussion protocol, WWE has outlawed the practice of cracking opponents in the head with a steel chair. Doesn't matter if the victim can adequately get his hands up to deflect the blow, WWE does not do chairs to the head anymore, and they haven't in a long time. The following video will serve to further demonstrate why that years-long ban has been for the best. I'm Adam Pacisi from Cultaholic Wrestling, and these are the 10 most brutal WWE chair shots. Join us. Number 10, Not A Lot Of Love. The WWE title match at 1998's Over the Edge is a masterclass in how to turn a match into a wild spectacle. Steve Austin had to navigate a stacked deck in his defense of the gold against Dude Love, with Vince McMahon presiding as guest referee and the Stooges on standby at ringside. The Undertaker was also there to ensure Austin got a fair shake as a kind of self-appointed ringside enforcer. What ensued was perfect chaos, a half hour that defines the Attitude Era at its strongest. Of course, because the match degenerated into abject lawlessness, there had to be some chair play therein. Mick Foley ate his own hellacious steel sandwich, courtesy of Austin, late in the match, but mere seconds later, he would dole out a pretty heinous shot of his own. When McMahon refused to count Foley down, Austin confronted him, allowing a groggy dude to gain possession of the chair. He snuck up behind Stone Cold with the chair raised high, but alas, the champion moved and it was Vince himself that got crowned with the brain-rattling strike. Per the script, Vince lay unconscious for the remainder of the match, so either he's a really good actor or, well, you know. Number 9. Slaying the Beast no matter the era, Brock Lesnar has been portrayed as a nearly unassailable monster, largely because it's hardly a stretch, is it? The Beast Incarnate resides high in the upper echelon of final boss wrestlers due to his build, his freakish agility, and his inhuman strength. Upon arrival in WWE in 2002, Lesnar was portrayed as a reinforced world beater, randomly attacking mid-carders of various shapes, sizes, and skill sets. It's always impressive to see Lesnar throw people around like like beanbag, so it made sense to quickly program Brock against the aerodynamic Hardy Boys. To set up for a Lesnar-Jeff Hardy singles match at the 2002 Backlash, WWE ran an angle on an episode of Raw that saw the Hardys try to stand up to Lesnar, only to be quickly overwhelmed. The TLC twosome then introduced chairs for their second go at Lesnar, who briefly maintained control of the fray. Then, when Lesnar tried to set Matt up for a powerbomb, Jeff swung his chair for the fences, smashing Lesnar in the forehead and face with a shot that echoed throughout the arena. Somehow, Lesnar remained vertical after the strike, which might be more astonishing than the shot itself. Number 8. Thrown Through a Loop if Rey Mysterio and Sabu had faced off sometime around 1995, tape traders' heads would have exploded trying to fathom the very idea. Between Mysterio's unparalleled acrobatics and Sabu's daring disregard for human life, you are talking two icons to those who shunned the big two of the day. Sabu and Mysterio only actually wrestled once, and somewhat surprisingly, it came under the WWE banner. The ECW brand, yes, but the WWE banner regardless. Mysterio in his classic tights defended his World Heavyweight title against Sabu at the 2006 One Night Stand pay-per-view before a raucous New York crowd. As it was, the match was pretty damn good, and could have gone down as a classic if not for the BS non-ending. At one juncture late in the all-too-brief encounter, Mysterio tries a springboard seated senton onto Sabu, who was occupying a chair. Sabu then moved, resulting in Mysterio entering Groin Pool City. As Ray Ray tended to his tender loin, Sabu picked up the chair and threw it directly into Mysterio's head, resulting in a harsh metallic sound reverberating through the Hammerstein ballroom. Number 7. A Legend Killing Swing the 2004 Royal Rumble match would be more fondly remembered today if not for the fact that the winner's name is irrevocably tarnished. Chris Benoit's hour-long trek to a long-overdue world title match was one great story told during an excellent 04 Rumble. Another inspired tale involved number two entrant Randy Orton, who weeks earlier had basically chased an apprehensive Mick Foley out of WWE. The legend killer had slithered his way deep into the rumble field when a ghost from his immediate past unexpectedly sprung up. 
After taking out Test backstage, Foley entered from his number 21 spot and immediately went after a horrified Orton. Mick got the upper hand, took Orton and himself out of the match with the classic cactus clothesline, and continued the fight at ringside. It was here that Orton, in a desperate attempt to keep the invader at bay, slammed a steel chair hard into the skull of Foley. The strike took place next to the ringside camera, so the sound was especially barbaric. Incredibly, Foley kept taking the fight to Orton, despite enduring a chair shot that could have dented a tank. Number 6. Wounded Champion when JBL smashed Eddie Guerrero in the head with a steel chair at the 2004 Judgment Day, people tend to remember the aftermath more. After the chair hit Guerrero's cranium, a river of blood gushed from Guerrero's scalp, saturating not just his face, but his lower abdomen as well within seconds. It should be noted that the blood was not hard way juiced from the vicious chair shot, but rather a blade job on Guerrero's part that, shall we say, overachieved? By match's end, the reigning WWE Champion was more bloodstained than person. The alarming amount of blood loss is what the Guerrero vs JBL match is most known for, so much so that we tend to forget the actual chair shot that preceded the spilling of Crimson. Following a referee bump, the competitors brawled out to ringside, where a desperate JBL grabbed a folding chair and hammered Guerrero's head like a railroad spike. The substantial height difference made the strike more perilous, as well as the fact that JBL BL tends to swing for the fences. Number 5. Dead Kennedy while JBL is considered one of the more unforgiving chair swingers in WWE history, he has a clear rival in one of his closest real-life friends, The Undertaker. Many individuals have felt the wrath of an Undertaker chair shot, and stories of such encounters hold a lot less quaintness these days. By contrast, in 2020, Mr. Kennedy spoke somewhat fondly of the time Undertaker decimated both him and a piece of furniture at the 2006 Survivor Series in Philadelphia. Kennedy scored the victory over the dead man in a first blood match, but Undertaker, of course, doesn't exactly take defeat with much grace, right Maven? A blood-soaked Undertaker exacted his revenge by taking a folding chair, waiting for Kennedy to rise to his feet, and then plastering him with a mighty swing. The chair shot was so brutal that the seat grossly contorted. Kennedy ended up wearing the chair as an overstarched necktie. In an interview years later, Kennedy contended that the chair shot looked worse than it actually was, and appreciates the visual of how the chair wrapped around his head. Number 4. Blue Vitriol there are some cultaholic fans out there that have a fixation over the incident between JBL and the Blue Meanie at the 2005 ECW One Night Stand. For the uninitiated, it goes like this. JBL and Meany had prior heat. The two found each other during the show-ending brawl, and JBL beat Meany to a pulp before several ECWs swarmed in to chase JBL out. Meany spoke publicly about possible legal action, prompting a PR-conscious WWE to sign Meany to a short-term contract. As part of his brief return to the company, Meany faced JBL on an episode of SmackDown in a no-DQ match. Meany's BWO running buddy, Stevie Richards, was part of the skirmish and was directed to give JBL a chair shot. When Richards did, it was a frontal lobe flattening smash that many JBL haters look back at with a little bit of Schadenfreude. Though many believe that Richards did that as a receipt for what JBL did to his friend, Richards revealed on Rene Dupree's podcast that one, JBL just told him to lay it in, and two, the height difference made it harder for Richards to deliver a properly measured swing. As a result, it looked pretty brutal. Number 3. Shamrock Shaken be careful what you wish for, ask, and you shall receive. There are a few time-tested cliches that could apply to the chair shot that The Rock gave Ken Shamrock during the pair's long feud in the early part of 1998. Shamrock recalled the moments years later, and admitted that he hated taking chair shots higher up on the head. When a spot called for The Rock to level the world's most dangerous man with a similar skull cruncher, Shamrock called a curious audible. When discussing the spot, Shamrock told Rock to hit him in the face with a chair. Rock initially objected, but Shamrock talked him into it, saying that if Rock didn't give it to him good, he wouldn't sell it. Conscious selling wasn't exactly required when the villainous Rock planted the steel across Shamrock's kisser, and the Great One indeed laid it in good. Shamrock infamously preceded the strike with an overt gesture of bring it, which Ken explained was him reminding Rock to give it a good swing, just as he asked him to. As for the aftermath, Shamrock claims his first 
thought was, thank God I'm alive. Number 2. Twisted Metal We've already talked about The Undertaker's propensity for swinging a steel chair with brute force. We've discussed Brock Lesnar's ability to take a brain basher standing. When The Undertaker and Lesnar clashed over the WWE title at Unforgiven 2002, it may as well have been the irresistible force meeting the immovable object. I mean, it was in the kayfabe slash storyline sense, but with a steel chair eventually getting introduced into the match, either Taker was going to obliterate Brock with the weapon, or Brock was going to reduce the chair to shrapnel with his head. Actually, both kinda happened. Undertaker and Lesnar wound up fighting to a double disqualification, which necessitated a more famous rematch inside Hell in a Cell four weeks later. Before that bothersome non-finish, the two beasts brawled following a referee bump and Lesnar advocate Paul Heyman introduced a steel chair to the skirmish. Undertaker quickly gained possession of the weapon and proceeded to almost cave in Lesnar's head with a thuddening shot. The seat of the chair was wild contorted by the solitary strike, so you can imagine how dazed Lesnar was from the impact. Number 1. One After Another there may be chair shots on this list that qualify as the most singularly brutal of the lot. However, for sheer volume, one need look no further than the 1999 Royal Rumble, when Mankind defended his WWE title against The Rock in an I Quit match. Rock understandably had his work cut out for him, making Mick Foley give up was not going to be an easy task. The Rock would have to go beyond the pale in order to make Mankind utter those two magical words. What followed is one of the most infamous sequences in pro wrestling history, as while the match is lauded in some circles for the drama and effort, watching Rock destroy Foley with 10 consecutive chair shots to the head while Foley was handcuffed behind his back stands out above all. Mankind's refusal to quit and Rock's unyielding desire to win at all costs made for one hell of a story, but the physical toll was hellacious. The 1999 documentary Beyond the Mat captured much of the backstage aftermath as well as anguishing shots of Mick's family watching in tearful horror from the crowd. You can argue placement and pick nits with the top choices, but in terms of the most famous chair strikes to the head, the Rock and Mick Foley's unbelievable scene from the 1999 Royal Rumble comes to mind first. 